I'm Brian Moskew. I'm the Bleeding Edge web organizer. Corey is actually the co-organizer. And uh, let's see, today I guess we're talking about fitness for geeks. O'Reilly sent me some cool books. So I'll be giving away some of these at some point if anyone's interested. Uh, first, before we get started, I'm just curious. Um, how many of you guys are actually techie? And how many are non-techie? So a few. I knew by the subject matter, and I was seeing people register that weren't necessarily techie sounding in their you know, descriptions and so forth. So just to let you know, for any of you guys who are new to the meetup, Generally, it's a pretty technical meetup, although tonight it's actually going to be less technical than normal, I think, because we are sort of talking about fitness, and it's got the geeky kind of spin on it, but we're not going to go into any super crazy technical stuff, um, so at least I'm not going to. Um, normally, I'd start off for you techie guys who, if any of you haven't been here before, I normally start off and do 15 or 20 minute kind of overview of what's going on, usually since the last meetup in the world of browsers and W3C and just kind of give an overview of the bleeding edge, what's going on. Um, I'm going to forgo that tonight and focus on the geek fitness stuff just because once I started kind of preparing it, I kind of got into that and it was a lot more interesting than like browser versions and things like that that I normally talk about. Um, and also I wanted to make sure and leave plenty of room for these guys. So this is Trung and Dr. Trung. And Patrick, their CMO, couldn't be here this evening because he's actually working on their business, which is awesome. Um, these guys are a startup here in town, and they'll tell you more about what they do. But basically, they have an app that's focused on uh, fitness for kind of professionals and office workers, um, and they'll tell you more about that. Sponsor, Hot Lava. Yes. Uh, is your presentation going to be downloadable? It's, yeah, it will be, yeah. It's all just web-based uh, HTML slides, so I'll stick them on GitHub afterwards, right. post a link. So Ben Broussard is not here, I don't think, right? So I think hopefully he will come at some point. Um, he's the owner of Hot Lava Obstacle Course, and he's actually also a techie guy. He's a web security expert who happens to own an exercise gym, which is interesting. Mm -hmm with his wife, but he's actually going to be talking next month, I believe, on web application security. So you'll hear more about that later. But hopefully if he shows up, he promised me a giveaway related to this. We'll see if he shows up. And then, of course, a little shout out to O'Reilly. They get, you know, it's pretty awesome. If any of you guys run a meetup or a user group or anything like that, so they contacted me and said, hey, would you be interested if we sent you a book? And I said, yeah, sure. So the next week, this huge box shows up on my doorstep, and it's you know four of these plus like a random assortment of other O'Reilly books, like ten or twelve books in total, just for free. Pretty awesome. So I'll use those also as giveaways at other meetups and so forth. Okay, so fitness for geeks. <clears throat> of course, these are the typical geeks <laughs> that we all know, right? This is, if you haven't seen Swordfish, this is a scene from Swordfish. So we've got our incredible hackers, Hugh Jackman and Halle Berry there. No, that is not the typical geek, right? Yes, these are the geeks that we all know and love. This is more what we think about, right? More what we identify with. By the way, before I get into this, in case it's not obvious, this is going to be more of a do as I say, not as I do kind of presentation. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not in terrible shape, but I'm not like Hugh Jackman either. So, um, you know, I actually do have plans personally. The reason I also got into this now was just like hopefully many of you, I sort of made my own January resolutions about getting fit and so forth. So part of the fun of this presentation for me was sort of doing my own research and figuring out, you know, the strategies that I want to try myself. So why do geeks need to think about fitness? Um, there was this study, it's actually sponsored by a company that makes a product that addresses this, so take it with a grain of salt. But regardless of that, I think we'd all pretty much agree that knowledge workers, computer people, geeks in general who do that kind of stuff, you typically run into these kinds of injuries very commonly, right? Um, I know personally, I actually have a sore neck today 
and it's probably from you know my posture with the computer and so forth. And in my past, I've had back pain, I've had bouts with sort of wrist pain. And I'm sure we've all kind of dealt with that kind of stuff. These guys are actually going to talk a lot more about that. But that's just you know why do geek? Why should we care about that stuff, right? The typical geek lifestyle, nutrition, <laughs> exercise, right? This is what we think of. But you know, all fun aside, it doesn't really have to be that way, right? I think the point is, you know, geeks generally have kind of better things to think about, right? We're busy building something on the computer or doing whatever. And for me personally, exercise always takes a backseat. Don't, not something I really want to spend time on. But we can do it, and we should do it. And what I'm going to talk about are sort of identifying some of the attributes of the typical geek and how we can sort of turn those to our advantage. So nutrition, we all kind of intuitively know if you ask people, they know how to eat right, right? Everyone knows the basics. It's just that no one really does it because even though it's really simple to eat well, it's actually not easy to eat well, right? It's not complicated. It's just hard to do it. So how can we as geeks sort of break through that barrier? Well, first of all, we're logical. And there's this awesome ebook called The Hacker's Diet. It's actually been around forever. It was written in the early 90s by the founder of Autodesk. The thing I like about this is it's not really, you know, there's diets every other week that come out, right? There's fad diets, you know, since probably since, uh, you know, the beginning of the printing press, the, probably the second book off the press was a fad diet. Um, the thing I like about this, it's the hacker's diet. It's written from the perspective of a hacker. This guy, John Walker, the founder of Autodesk, he was like a big time geek. Like he wrote the first version of AutoCAD, right? By himself. So he sort of, you know, when you read the about part of the book, he was a big guy, you know, struggled with his weight all his life. And so as a hacker, self-proclaimed, he sort of said, all right, how can I analytically left-brained look at the problem in front of me and solve it, right? And so it's a, you know, just a super fascinating book. Anyone who has sort of that geek or hacker mindset, I think will appreciate it because he basically walks through how to look at meal planning, how to look at losing weight, and then like how to keep it off, strategies for that. And of course, being a hacker, he has spreadsheets and he wrote a little app, which you know, to date it, it was written for Palm Pilot. So it's probably not something you're gonna download and use today, but you know, he just, like I said, you can just even tell by this little graph, it's kind of pretty simple, right? There's energy and calories coming in and there's energy going out and, and waste going out and whatever. And it's all about finding the correct balance and strategies for making that happen. So it's, a, it's an interesting take um, that you should check out. Geeks also often love efficiency. So, you know, part of the thing with eating, like for me, is meal planning is a drag. I cannot stand always, you know, you show, you show up at your house, look through the pantry and stand in front of the freezer, there's nothing to eat, and then you end up going to Jack in the Box, right? How many times have you done that? So Soylent is this new kind of concept in eating. It's a nutritionally complete meal, all in one glass. So this guy figured out, you know, the mix of vitamins and minerals and nutrients that constitute everything you basically need nutritionally and boiled it down to 16 ounces worth of you know, slush. <laughs> uh, I've never tasted it. You know, I was actually going to order some and try to have some here as kind of an interactive thing, but it's actually not shipping yet. So um, he did a crowd tilt, you know, crowdfunding thing, raised 2 million bucks, and they were planning on actually having started ship, uh, shipping it by now, I believe, but they're running a little bit late. But if you're interested in literally not having to think about food at all and drinking every meal out of a glass, this might be something to check out. Um, does everyone know where Soylent comes from? Anyone so not heard of it? Yeah. So there was a movie in the 70s based on a book before that called Soylent Green. Um, and I won't spoil the surprise if you haven't seen it. It's kind of an interesting movie. Okay, so geeks love gadgets, of course, right? Doesn't Everyone has a couple iPhones. of your rules. Pardon me? Doesn't that break a couple of your rules? Which rules? Don't drink calories, eat more produce. Well, don't drink empty calories, I should have said, right? So don't drink Coke, don't drink 
you know, things that have no nutritional value other than the caloric value of the sugar that's in it. That's really the rule. So I know you were all thinking, man, if there was just a fork that would track <laughs> my eating for me, then all my problems would be solved. You know, this thing is amazing. So this actually just came or came out publicly at CES, which just happened a few weeks back. This was like one of the things that kind of got people's attention. It literally is a fork. It actually plugs into your computer via USB. You take the little end off and it plugs in. And it has sensors and it actually tracks the movement of the fork and correlates that to bites. And then it tells you, like the whole concept is it wants you to eat slowly and sort of have a measured meal rather than wolfing everything down. Like that's the whole concept. And it tracks it, it's got a mobile app of course. So I cannot say that I've tried it, so I can't tell you if it works, but it's definitely worth checking out. Interesting, interesting little gadget for eating. So that's all the nutrition stuff. And then of course we have exercise, right? You can't have fitness without talking about exercise. So another attribute of geeks, we're all busy, right? Probably no one in this room, except I know one person in this room who's a fitness trainer, so we won't count her. But most of the people in this room probably don't have an hour and a half a day to do like the full workout, right? <laughs> so there is an app called FitStar, which is kind of cool. It's a, basically, it's a workout in a box kind of app for the iPad and via AirPlay, you can put it up on the TV. And the whole concept is it basically sort of replaces the DVDs and CDs of yesteryear and it's kind of like that concept for the 21st century sort of like the package of 20 workout dvds but the cool thing about it is it's customized for you based on your workout and it's based on time as well so you can actually log into it and say you know i've got an hour today or i've only got 15 minutes today and it'll customize a workout still based on your goal of losing weight or gaining strength and then fit to your constraints so that's pretty cool if that's still too much, there's the seven minute workout. So it's 12 exercises, literally these 12 exercises, body weight only and with a chair. And, you know, obviously it's not maybe as good as a full hour workout, but, you know, based on scientific study, they've basically said that it's you get 90% of the benefit of a much longer workout if you do it correctly and if you do it with maximum intensity, basically. So there you go. All of you, including myself, who claim to be so busy that we have no time to work out, seven minutes, okay? But I hear you say, well, seven minutes is way too much, okay? <laughs> way too much time. There's a four minute workout, okay? This just came out uh, in March of last year. <coughs> and this isn't actually a specific workout, like it doesn't have specific moves. The study was just that if you do four minutes of 90% effort uh, activity, um, that it has the same effect. They, basically, the way they measured it was they had a group do four minutes, and then they had another group repeat that four minute workout four times for a 16 minute total workout. And they found no discernible benefit to doing the additional workouts within that time frame past <laughs> the first four minutes. And they did that three times a week. So that's 12 minutes a week of exercise, okay? A week, guys, that is doable, I think, for most of us. So, you know, again, the more workout you do, the better, but we're talking like, as geeks, right? We're trying to maximize our time. If all you have is a few minutes here and there, this should prove it to you. No excuse not to do something. Now, we tend to sit a lot, right? So these guys are actually gonna talk about that, of course, with their, their workout plan. But there's also a lot of options for chairs and so forth. So these guys have a thing, it's kind of a glorified stool, but it's adjustable in different ways and it kind of rocks and it's all about creating instability. And if you think about it, it's kind of a constant low intensity core workout. Uh, they call it active sitting. So that's something to consider if you sit at a desk a lot. Now, I talked about geeks loving gadgets with the crazy fork that we saw. Geeks also love gadgets when it comes to working out, right? And there's plenty of choices. I'm sure we've all seen the Fitbit, Nike Fuel Band. There's a ton of them. Uh, especially, it seems like in the last year, it's, it's really taken off this whole wearable fitness gadget thing. So I'm not gonna be, you know, belabor that, 
but I'm going to pick out a few notable ones. Um, one is called the Atlas Wristband. It's interesting because they're actually an Austin startup that's doing really well right now. They're, they're actively running an Indiegogo campaign, and they've already exceeded their goal by, I think, almost 100% now. Um, and they're only like a week into it. Um, the really cool thing about this, so all those other ones like Fitbit, the Nike one, they track your movement, but they're kind of simplistic because they basically just sort of generally track is the thing moving or not, and they kind of, you know, they do it enough to estimate steps and basic things like that. The differentiator here is this thing actually recognizes specific workout movements, which is really cool. So somehow they figured out how to measure it such that they can distinguish a push-up from a pull-up. And so this thing can actually not only measure the normal sort of heart rate, that kind of stuff, but it can actually say you did 10 push-ups with, you know, so much, you know, within so much of a time frame, for example, and it can measure your complete workout like that. It's compatible with other third-party apps um, and it has its own API as well. So pretty cool. And like I said, they're an Austin company, so I wanted to highlight that. Lumo back. So these are the guys that actually sponsored that study earlier, the Silicon Valley syndrome thing. So again, take that one with a grain of salt. But the gadget that they're selling is kind of interesting because it um, is a sensor specifically for posture. So as you're sitting throughout the day, when it sort of notices you slouching or whatever, it'll actually slightly vibrate to kind of clue you in the to fix your posture. So the whole concept of that is you know, sort of retraining your body through constant monitoring and constant little reminders. Um, so it's actually, I'm actually slightly considering getting that thing because I have that problem myself. So if I do, I'll let you guys know if it works. Uh, so gadgets, geeks also love measuring things. A lot of geeks do. So another Austin shout out. Again, there's lots of apps that kind of do this, but Map My Fitness happens to be in Austin, it happened to be uh, one of the really huge uh, makers of, of fitness software in this space, specifically around tracking. So you can map sort of your cycling or jogging routes, um, compare them with other people and share them and all that kind of stuff. Um, and again, all, all comes down to measuring. So you can sort of measure where you went, how fast you went, and then see if you can repeat it time after time, that kind of thing. Geeks can also be extreme at times. They like to sometimes take things to their <laughs> extremes, maybe even a little too far, as I kind of said here. Um, I don't know that I would recommend this, but if you get so crazy about exercising that you just can't stop and you want to exercise all day long, there's a, a fit desk for that. Geeks love games, so probably have a lot of gamers. Photocracy is kind of a cool app slash website. So it's all about gamifying fitness. So you can actually challenge other people to fitness challenges. Um, you get achievement badges, which is kind of fun, I guess, if you're into badges. Um, you can do social sharing through their app. So um, the, when you look at the about page for this, it's actually designed by self-proclaimed fitness geeks. So they were all about, you know, kind of what we're talking about tonight, which is trying to make it engaging for the type of people that otherwise wouldn't like to exercise. And then here's a fun one, Zombies Run. So this is a really popular um, iOS app, and it's kind of cool. I've got it on my phone. So instead of just going out for a jog, you actually start a mission. And as you're running, you have to stop, you know, or stop, you know, as you're running, you sort of check into a location and grab supplies like ammo or something. And then you get to the next checkpoint to save someone. And then at some point, zombies show up in your virtual rear view mirror. So you have to accelerate to outrun them. You know, it's just jogging. But if you distract yourself a little bit and do some of the gamification aspects of it, you don't think of it that way, right? So it's like, makes it a little bit fun. Um, so that's one to check out. And actually the one I have, they have a couple of versions of this and they have one that is specifically a five, it's called Zombies 5K, I think. And it's kind of cool. It's like a, a training regimen for building up from nothing to running a 5K. And so they actually take you step by step each workout, tell you exactly how far to run and what increments and it uh, works pretty well. So that's a lot of stuff in review. 
geeks have a lot of these different attributes. You know, not everyone is going to have all of these attributes, but hopefully we can agree that that's a pretty good representation of your typical kind of geek. <clears throat> so my whole point is figure out which of those things resonate with you. Surely there's an app or a gadget or something in there that kind of, you know, sounded interesting and just make it happen. So again, even if you only have 12 minutes a week and maybe you pick one of those gadgets that you thought was kind of cool, there's no excuse for anyone in this room to not try to work on fitness this year. Make it happen. So that's my spiel. <coughs> I will, after these guys get done, I'll work on um, distributing the books and so forth. But thanks for your time and I'll hand it over to these guys. That's great. <laughs> on this one, I want to get you that's okay. That one. Yeah, well, I mean, that'll already, oh, sorry. it'll okay. show up on okay. both. Right now. Awesome. Um, yeah, you can take a just connect with the uh, Facebook. Actually, we can just wait to get ready, because it's just, we just so, have to switch the input. Yeah, yeah. if you go ready, to the Facebook, um, it's open your browser. Okay. I like it. Um, my name is Trung, um, co-founder and CEO of FitChimp, and this is Dr. Trung, not to be confused, he's a doctor, I'm not, um, and he's our Chief Wellness Officer, and today we're here to talk about um, FitChimp. So what is FitChimp? FitChimp is a quick way for you to get eight pack abs in just five minutes, right? So, And actually, if you order from us in the next 30 minutes, we'll toss in another eight packs of fruit. That's, uh, that's 16 pack abs. So, yeah, we have those. Um, but no, really, so we're, we're actually here to talk about the negative health effects of sedentary behavior, such as prolonged sitting, right? Um, so just by show of hands, how many of you here spend at least seven hours a day sitting? You find a computer, perhaps? Okay. And among those, don't be shy, but how many actually do work out maybe 30 minutes in a day or a couple times a week? Okay, great. Um, so knowing that, and before we get a little further, I wanna show you guys a quick video. It just came out, I think today, um, about sitting and the negative health benefits, of, I mean, not benefits, negative health effects of it. Um, especially, you know, there's a lot of scientific research, it's a hot topic, um, even in popular media. Uh, so let me kind of work this real quick and hold the video. Yeah. Yeah, the mirror. There it goes. Okay. You can set your display to mirror. Okay. Yeah. Here. Okay. Yeah. Let's try that. We'll take a stand for your health. Literally. That's what doctors are telling millions of us who work at a desk all day. CDO students Dr. Max Gomez says sitting all day could be as risky as smoking meds. That's right, Dick and Alice, you know, it's hard to believe. But our couch potato lifestyle is killing us at about the same rate as smoking. And it's not just sitting around at home. It's also our sit for hours and hours work days that are part of an unhealthy sedentary lifestyle. Here's how to make it healthier. Does this sound familiar? Get up, commute to work, and then sit at your desk for hours at a time once you arrive. I guess I sit, I don't know, I'd probably say a total of like uh, five or six hours. Ten hours a day? Most of the day. Millions of us are in the same boat. Office work and computers mean you rarely have to get up from your desk, and that's not good. Sitting is probably killing me. And the Caulfield is right. A number of studies have shown that prolonged sitting is linked to an increased risk of heart disease, obesity, diabetes, cancer, even early death. Pretty much like smoking. Well, smoking certainly is a major cardiovascular risk factor, and sitting can be 
equivalent in many cases. A recent study showed levels of physical activity at lower levels of sitting time were positively associated with excellent health and quality of life. The obvious solution is to exercise more, but busy lifestyles and a common aversion to exercise makes it hard to compensate for hours sitting at a desk. The good news is, and that doesn't mean that we have to go to the gym for 30 minutes in the day, I mean, you know, just a brisk walk. Uh, we don't have to do it continuously, even doing 10 minutes three times a day will work. Researchers say even standing up to take a phone call or walking around the workplace helps. Some folks have even started using combination treadmill desks at work, anything that contracts our muscles and gets blood flow. Some doctors recommend getting up once an hour from your desk, even if it's just to walk around your desk or go to the bathroom. Now, this does not mean that walking to go have a smoke outside evens out your health risks. <laughs> An occasional stroll at work is not enough to keep you really healthy. It's just that every little bit helps. So watch this program standing up, please. Well, we, no, we're wired. Or we it's too late. <laughs> Um, so that video basically kind of talks about our next three or four slides. So we're just going to zip through the next ones really quick. As you can see, the headlines are sitting is killing you, sitting is a disease, all that. So it's enough to kind of get your attention, at least kind of listen to, you know, what's the deal behind that. Um, you know, sitting is a new smoking, like I said, every hour of sitting cuts your span of life by 22 minutes. You know, whatever that means, you can kind of do the math with that. Um, the key thing is it increases your risk of death up to 40%. And what is shocking is even if you work out for 30 minutes a day, it does, um, doesn't undo the negative health effects of sitting. Um, so, and that's actually considered, they call the term active couch potato, right? So unless we're cats, we don't have nine lives. Um, it's, we definitely want to consider what we have to do to solve this problem. Cool. So I don't know about you guys, but being as young as I am, I don't think about chronic diseases or premature death. And looking around the room, I'm assuming that all of you guys are saying. I mean, who cares about premature death when you're in the thirties, right? But what about these problems? Brian mentioned earlier that strong research coming out, you know, saying that physical inactivity and prolonged sitting have a negative effect on pain. As a physical therapist, 99.9% of the time, not 100% of the time, 99.9% of the time, patient comes see me because of pain. And guess what? Pain leads to improductivity in life and at work. So think about that for a minute. Not just premature death, but what about quality of life? So what are we going to do about it? And Brian, you said you had some neck pain. Mm -hmm. And yes. if you talk to him afterwards. Sure. So we can walk more. We can take the stairs. Or some of us do park the car further away, right? And at work, Brian mentioned earlier, there's a fit desk. You saw the video, there's a uh, treadmill. But I don't know about you, Trent. Can you work in? Walk on a trip no, at the same I, time. So I'm a, I'm a coder also, and I, I don't see myself running like thousands of times while walking or, or biking. I mean, maybe for like five minutes. So. <laughs> um, so while we're up, what else can we do that's fun, engaging, and also helping us? Okay? So that's what Fitchum is, is about. So Fitchum is about helping you fix your pain while you're up, and hopefully you can get functional exercise where you improve the way you squat down, pick up things, reaching out, pick up things, or lunging, lifting up things. Fitcher, in a nutshell, is, you go to that. Yeah, so, I mean, what you're seeing here is 
is a station that we deploy. So this is actually our product combined with a set of stability balls, a yoga mat, and light resistance weight. Um, so it's designed for a place to take quick two to five minute breaks and come here and knock out quick workouts or stretches or injury prevention uh, designed by you know, Dr. Trump, physical therapist, to enable you to feel better, but not only that, is fix your pain, like sitting problems, neck problems. Um, you will instantly feel better after doing these exercises. So we're actually in a couple of customers uh, here in Austin. As you can see, it, our customer base varies from a lady who's slightly overweight, but she had previous back problems. So she'll do like a, a quick five minute stronger back workout and instantly feel better. She can do it once a day. Um, and essentially it's a way to prevent further pain and also access a way to rehab. Um, here you also see like Tiffany and Casey, they're a little more fit. So for them, it's kind of like, instead of you know, taking a shot of coffee at 3 p.m., they hop to our station um, and get the energy boost, right? So there's, there's a lot of different use cases um, that we support. And just kind of quickly go through uh, some of the app screenshots. Since we're catering to quick workouts, everything you see here is two to five minute workouts um, for all levels and variety of different interests. You can also browse to things like stay vertical because we're trying to cater to people at work. Sometimes you don't want to get on the floor. So those kind of exercises uh, just require you to stand up. Um, as, and then as you see, there's also injury prevention, uh, which is a lot of physical therapy based workouts. So we're not really just talking about high intensity, you know, go all, all in sweat kind of workouts. Um, so yeah, that's like a list of injury prevention workouts, stronger back in five minutes, uh, ask and core therapy, and it's all video-based and audio-based coaching. Combined with that is, I guess, data. We track all of that. We can also roll it out as a way to engage and, and have friendly competition within companies. Um, so, and then, okay, so next, we're actually gonna have a little group workout where we can all do together. We're, we're not gonna be doing those, for sure. <laughs> um, so so we that's, have to ask you to desk yeah. up a little bit. Oh, we probably would need some room. Okay, we'll skip yeah. that workout. Okay, you'll skip that one. Up this a little bit. Thanks, Raj. So essentially when we deploy this at companies, everyone has their own login and it's based off your phone number, something easy to remember. Okay, so this interface, we actually created a workout right before uh, this meetup called the Bleeding Edge Workouts. <laughs> and we're, oh, there's like a huge lag on this. Okay, there it goes. Um, so it's just a two and a half minute workout, something everyone can do. And I'm gonna head and get start. And we'll just kind of go through it. Robot. So this is actually a preview. It's showing you how to do the excess exercise. If you could move the desk and have some room if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go through that. Bend from the waist and do not allow your shoulder to slump forward. <laughs> Having your eyes follow the dumbbells for this exercise can help to keep you focused. You're halfway there. Keep it up. Don't forget to be normal in your nose and out your mouth. You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, 
One. All right. How's everyone feeling? Next up. <laughs> you might want to face that one. Yeah, I guess that's a good idea. Entire lower body and hamstring. What's it? You want to say? Yeah. That's just thirty seconds. <laughs> Step out as far as your leg is to reduce stress on your knees. Do not let your knees hit the ground. Do not allow your knees to go past your toes. You're halfway there. Keep it up. Don't forget to breathe long in your nose and out your mouth. Give it five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Next up is the standing upper trap stretch. Do this stretch and instantly feel the stress in your neck going away. Hold this stretch for 30 seconds. Although you can perform this stretch while sitting, we encourage everyone to get up and move around every hour. You should feel a deeper stretch in the neck area. You're doing awesome. That's halfway there. Go ahead and switch. Don't forget to breathe normal in your nose and out your mouth. You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Next, standing Too wrist flexor stretch. A great stretch for the wrist. Hold this stretch for 30 seconds. Hold at the tips of your fingers to get a stronger stretch. Feel the stronger stretch by breathing deeply and slowly in your nose and out your mouth. You're doing awesome. That's Switch. halfway there. It's normal to feel uncomfortable, but not painful during your stretches. You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Next up, standing pec stretch. Want to improve your posture instantly? Try this exercise. Hold this stretch for 30 seconds. This is the perfect stretch after sitting all day. Having your palms facing upward will allow you to feel a stronger stretch. You're doing awesome. That's halfway there. Don't forget to breathe normal in your nose and out your mouth. You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Congratulations. You just finished your workout. I hope you feel more productive. Let us know how you feel about your workout by leaving us some feedback. Yeah, and then after that, we just kind of collect their feedback. It's just right, four stars, and I feel awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then just quickly through the app, you maintain your history, so you can always scroll back and see what you did. You can come back tomorrow or later in the afternoon or your day. Uh, and then earlier, like I showed, you can browse through categories. So for example, you can choose prevention. You can go ahead and say, take a stronger back in five minute workout. Um, and then, of course, you have the profile that kind of maintains your stats. Um, we're actually getting rid of all that uh, high measurement and weight and stage stuff because it doesn't really matter for what we do. Um, so, yeah, yeah. And uh, you guys can stand the whole time, totally fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. You got, you got questions? questions? Yeah. Uh, is it integrated with like smartwatches or Iron Man? Oh, yeah, so we had a lot of requests for that. It's, it's certainly on a roadmap. Um, for example, maybe it's great with um, Fitbit, right? Yeah. To go into that so there's That's a lot of requests. It's just not in our play at the moment. Yeah. Good question. Yes. Sir. I just, you know, on the recording, he was talking about inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the exhaling part, is that superior to exhaling out your nose? Because I found that it's more dehydrating. To Are you still out there? My mouth when I'm Let's keep moving. So, if you're done, okay, that's a good question. Uh, science has been proven that <coughs> inhale or no, you get more humidity. It's more efficient. 
right. for oxygen. Exhale on your on mouth is more natural for carbon dioxide to be released. But I, I haven't heard of the, uh, the experience you had. I'm just based on what science Just said. a very slight difference. Oh, interesting. It's, it's all I've noticed. Okay, that's a good point. <clears throat> I noticed that sometimes too, but I, I haven't read it from the literature. Yes? Um, what do you recommend your clients to do about hydration? Like you just brought up that point. Um, when I was doing the PNCX mm -hmm. program, they were mentioning drinking at least one glass of water 30 minutes prior to exercise so that your body's already hydrated by the time you're exercising. Sure. Sometimes even now, I'm still fine. I don't, I don't drink water before I start working out. I feel bad. Okay. So it all depends on your body weight and what you've been doing the night before and uh, throughout the day. Uh, all work, if you're asking about our workout specifically, all workouts are not too intense that will affect your uh, hydration or dehydration. Is that, can I answer your question? But in, in general, I always recommend, you know, drink water at least 30 minutes before. Yeah, so but I'll work out. I'm not saying you don't worry about it, but it will affect so you're, you're not gonna break a sweat? You can, you can. Now, if you if you say, uh, you go home, you say, hey, Trey, I want a workout that I want to break a sweat. I can write a workout for you. Me and you say, hey, Trey, I got 20 minutes at lunchtime. Can I not? Yeah, sure. But but our goal is to help people to, uh, to take an active role throughout the day, to get up, go to a fitness station. And, and, and do workouts that fix your pain and feel good about it, you know. And real quick at that water, usually, you know, you just kind of want to listen to your body. I mean, you've, you've heard about the lady who kind of, you know, was fatal because she drank too much water during yeah. marathons, but there was a lot of research around you sure. have to drink all water all the time, right? Um, so, I mean, if you're feeling a little dry in your throat, that's, that's okay. You know, your body's telling you to get some more water, right? Um, so, yeah, you had a question? You get a question. Oh, um, I may have been missed this information earlier, but mm -hmm. so for the, your product, the target demographic is definitely having like a station at a company and everyone kind of competing against one another in the same company or you just, <laughs> yes. I don't know if it's a comp, if I don't know if it's mainly based sure. on competition or just solely based on, I just want to get up and do a workout. The latter, that's, that's really what it's about. But we do have gamification in there right. uh, for people who are interested in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for example, we did run a competition during, uh, right before the holidays. Um, for people to, you know, knock out workouts or most minutes for two weeks yeah. and then they got a reward for it, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so those elements are there. Um, and then, yeah, just to continue helping with the retention aspects. Yeah, my main curiosity is, I guess, how the product is sold. Is it sold like you sell to a company or do you just sell it like as an app, you know? Sure. Yeah, it's a whole solution for the company. We um, don't have a way for you to download the app currently, right? There's many of those out there. If stars want them, it starts awesome. Um, if you want to work out 20 minutes at home, right? Um, so yeah, we're specifically just targeting companies um, at the moment. Yeah. So I actually have a little text section after this. <coughs> That's something we kind of want to go through. I know. I do. Yeah. Okay. Good. I know there's a few techies, <laughs> in, few there. techies in here. Okay. Okay. okay so. Where are we? Right, so we built, so that's a native iOS app, and then we have a membership portal that's actually built using uh, AngularJS, which is a single page JavaScript framework um, by Google. And when you know building this, my background's in LAMP stack, and I was questioning what can we do differently, because we used to like to try new stuff even if it's not good for business, right? Um, so what, uh, who's got my back end, and I decided to cross all that out and go to Parse. <coughs> Parse is essentially a mobile as a back-end service. Um, they actually got acquired by Facebook uh, recently, or last year. Um, so what it essentially let us do is build our whole app infrastructure service, right? Didn't have to spin up a server or a database. Um, and it really is a quick way to get started, especially for mobile developers who don't want to worry about all that stuff and just focus on user interaction and building the actual user product. And that's what we kind of decided to do. So Parse has you know, the core, which I'll probably mainly focus on, and then there's push, uh, parse, push notifications, and then Parse analytics. So it's kind of like a built-in, um, you know, I forgot what those analyst companies are, but they have those built-in. So if you look at you know, save data in the cloud, 
You don't have to spin up any database or servers. You just write data directly to the database. There, I think it's based off MongoDB. Um, but the key thing that I really enjoy working with Parse is the custom app code that you can write. So for example, you can create a function called average stores that your iPhone app can call and then your web app can call and then your Android app can call, um, all sharing the same code, right? That's all in the server. And that's, that's really a powerful part without having to you know, create your own REST APIs to integrate all that data. Um, and then you can run code unsafe. So if you fetch a, a parse object, that's what they're called, um, on iOS, instead of having all that logic in the app itself, it's just sitting on the server in the cloud, on Parse's cloud. So if you later extend your app to Android, um, you can leverage that same, exact same piece of code. So after save, before save, after delete, all that exists. Um, and then Parse, on the back end of Parse Cloud Code, it's all JavaScript based. So if you're used to writing JavaScript apps, you'll feel right at home on the server side. Um, it is node based as well. So you have all the benefits of um, server side and uh, front end. They also, they sorry, they also have a um, a powerful web presence. Essentially, <coughs> our website is running on Parse now just by dropping a set of HTML files and JavaScript files on their server. So I just push it there. Um, so really, as a mobile developer, you should definitely try Parse out. It takes care of all those infrastructure that you don't have to worry about, including cron jobs and everything uh, in between at the moment. How many here have actually tried Parse or are aware of it? Okay, cool. So do you, is it free or are you paying for it? Or so it's a mil, I think you got a million uh, API requests for free, right? Yeah, and then, something like that. Something like that, yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty high threshold to yeah. where you don't, you know, hit it for a while. Right, and then um, I think next level is like $200 a month for 15 million requests, which is quite a bit. Yeah. We, we haven't hit that yet, don't worry. Um, so yeah, any any questions on parse? Right. Yeah. So uh, I'm used to JavaScript being a front end language. Sure. How, how is that running on uh, kind of a back end server? Parse? Um, so check out Node. I think Brian could definitely <coughs> answer that a lot better. Um, but it's basically Node Node.js is a server side JavaScript framework, right? Yeah. So yeah, look up Node.js. Definitely. Is it a lot like Google App Engine? Never used Google App Engine, but I imagine it's something similar. Um, just probably done a whole lot better or a different use case targeted to a lot of independent mobile developers. I mean, they have a lot of other customers too, like Gizmo producing them. Um, but essentially, they just make everything super simple, right? Um, if you don't want to worry about any of those backend. I mean, we can take, say, I'm sure there's other like backend servers where you can just kind of dump data there, but the beauty of having this cloud code on the server is it's really where you know that distinguishes itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I've never used Google App Engine. Does it give you like a, a local dev environment? Are you, are you running a server at all, or are you just running no servers, servers at all? No servers yeah, at all. and that's the thing. I did ask them if we could run something locally, but they don't. They don't have a way to support that. So um, does it mock out the API calls? So, so when you can you're using their API. How do you? Do yeah. So they have SDKs for you know. <laughs> Java, iOS, and everything. Um, you can set up staging environments, right? Okay. And then there's like a command line you can push code um, instantly to staging or to production. Okay. Right. Cool. So th how how well does that scale? Like, how many developers have you had on a project? They they claim they can scale to mega millions. I guess. I mean, it's. I guess that it's all. I'm sure. It's, at the end of the day, that whole stack's probably on what Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then they build a layer on top of that, right? Um, so to answer your question, what can Amazon handle? Well, I mean, I'm sure they can happen, Yeah, which is for development. Everybody's using these staging yeah. servers. Well, so set. theoretically, think about a, a bunch of developers just using a REST endpoint. Okay. And so okay. you're not really going to step on any of it unless you're de designing and developing the same endpoint. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Everything is communicated by REST on their end. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then their, their JavaScript, they have baked in um, Backbone support. So all their models are actually based on Backbone models. Yeah. So if you're familiar with Backbone, you'll be right at home uh, building dynamic apps. Um, so you can build 
you know, typical server-side based apps on their system using node base, and then you can also use Backbone if you want to build a single page app. So Backbone JS is, is another uh, JavaScript framework um, designed for single page apps. You can kind of just integrate it into parts of your existing application. So if you're familiar with uh, standard web requests, right, like PHP or Rails, um, where you know, a user requests a browser, goes to the server, then has to send back the whole HTML, the whole data, yeah. uh, where single page app or leveraging you know, basics of Ajax, which is like, it'll just get fragments of data, say like a piece of JSON. Right, and then just get the data back, but that is HTML is already all there built on the client. So it's like running the whole app on the client side in your browser and just fetching for the data. Is that similar to like um, app software where it's just getting pieces as you move the map? Um, yeah, I'm sure there's elements of that, certainly. Yeah, um, trying to think of a really cool single page app out there that's popular. I mean, um, from like Facebook, Gmail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gmail, Facebook. there you go, Gmail, yeah. Facebook. Parts of Facebook, yeah. Right. I mean, it's basically an MV star framework that allows you to leverage something so that you can do something yes. like this without having to write a bunch of code for the infrastructure. Uh, it just kind of gives you patterns to use yeah. and structure your code <coughs> more proper. Right. Yeah, I think, I think the key word is MVC. Helps you organize your JavaScript code uh, a lot better. Right. And that's the same thing with AngularJS, AngularJS, Backbone.js. Uh, there's another popular one out there. Amber. 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 Yeah. So, um, but more questions on the tech stuff? Um, yeah. Talking about the, the parse back end, um, are, there, <coughs> are there already models built for, um, for the obvious server side functions like uh, you know, authorization, authentication, yes. Um, yes. email? So, you know, anything that, that involves sending out? You know, email verification thing or things like they, that. They they have um, authentication baked in, so you can actually in four lines of iOS code you can have a full authentication system with Facebook, Twitter, um, and then you know custom login, and then they'll actually synchronize all the different accounts and identities for you. Um, so really, you can even download one of their sample apps and literally have. 50% of your project done. Just add your own custom stuff if you want to do. Um, so, I mean, just real quick here, if you go to products, and then go to parse core. So kind of stuff I was mentioning earlier, you save data in a cloud, um, make your app social, they'll take care of resetting passwords and all that stuff for you. You don't have to write a single line of code for that. Um, and then running custom app code is really the part that I really enjoy working with. It's um, purely JavaScript SDK. And then of course the whole website thing where you just drop the HTML files on there and then leverage the same um, APIs. In this case, it's JavaScript, but it still connects via REST that your iOS apps communicating with. Um, and then you get a dashboard, like a data browser too. So if you guys are familiar with like PHP MyAdmin, for example, you get the full data browser, create your own objects. Um, and of course, it's, since it's kind of like a Mongo backend, you can create objects in real time too, right? In your application code. Um, and they make working with relationships really easily. You can actually um, mimic joins, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, one to many, many to many, all that as well. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I haven't came to any restrictions at the moment, considering, you know, what I've done in the past couple of years traditionally. Um, except they don't have a simple way to back up your um, project at the moment, your, your environment, so, which totally sucks. And they, I think they've been hearing a lot about it over last year, but I feel like they're maybe getting close to it. You mean like so, a local backup? Yeah, I mean, you should be able to just like click backup and all your data is backed up, your environment's backed up. They don't have that option, uh, right? Um, and it's a pain. So you have to end up doing custom export and running custom REST APIs to do that kind of backup. Yeah. Go figure, right? <laughs> Question back then? Yeah, I kind of want to go back to the non technical like, sure. product. Sure. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, I would love to see this at the company I work for. Okay. I'm curious, what do you guys find that is a good place to put these stations? Right. Um, so, you want to answer that? Yeah, sure. So, our goal is um, we try to create uh, an active environment 
But that, with that being said, if you have a, a space, uh, an open space, that, that would be a recommendation. But some, some offers currently we're working for, they have more ladies. They're like, well, we don't want to see people you know, looking at us when we squat. So they find a room and fit it in the room. So okay. it can be uh, a, you know, an open space, which I would love, because I want to change the culture of fitness, right? Or it can be in a closed door environment. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, I just want to share something with the group. One thing sure. I tried was uh, I was reading Tim Ferriss' book, The 4-Hour Workweek in Your Body, mm -hmm. and he mentions like kind of being weird and going into the stall and doing the hair squats. And I tried that actually, and I get like a 10 minute workout in. I do like hair squats and I do push ups against the sink. And I just alternate two minutes on, one minute on, two minutes on, one minute on, three times. Yeah. And I can do that outside, inside, the stall, sure. just anywhere. And sure. it gets my heart rate up above sure. 100. Absolutely. So right. if you want to just be different, then you yeah. hair squats in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I mean that's that's actually one of our customers. They put in an empty room with a nice view, and um, there's another one that's actually at Hoover's in a corner somewhere, and there's cubicles right next to it. So she's actually working like right here uh, next to it. Um, but again, it's yeah, you can really place it anywhere. So real quick, back to just kind of creating conversation or back to that whole seven minute scientific thing. That was, that was actually a New York Times article that posted, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so real quick on that one is if you dig into the actual research paper, um, like Brian said, you actually have to go at 90 to 100% to get the full benefits, right? Um, for most of us, we're probably gonna be hitting about 50 to 60%, would you say, or maybe 70. So you probably wanna do three rounds of those. So it's actually a 21 minute workout, right? Um, to fully get the benefits. Yeah, to fully get the health benefits. And then you're bringing me down. I'm um, no, I'm not. I'm not at all. I just want to. <laughs> no, trust me. I, I did that too, and I tried the seven minute nonstop. It's pretty rough. Can we just you're, do it once a month? Once a month. <laughs> <laughs> and the four minute, um, it, you know, hits sprinting. It absolutely works. If you want six pack abs, do that like once a day and eat like 1,500 calories. It absolutely works. <laughs> I've tried it. It works, but um, definitely not maintainable. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of science around working out and efficiency, and, and really that's what we're about. Except we're trying to take it to the office in a way. Sure. Yeah. Um, so just to make you know one thing clear, these apps are not, I guess, it's not available on the desktop or on the phone per se. We do have a station uh, that employees kind of have to actively walk up to. Uh, so. I don't know if we mentioned that, but just want to make sure because yeah. there are a lot of apps out there we can download. There mm -hmm. are stand up apps that you can download and you can get a phone and remind every hour you have to stand up. That's what you want to do, it's great. But, so. <laughs> so that's the fitness you're addressing, the, the problems with sedentarism. You're not making people strong or flexible or tireless. You're just. Keep well, them from killing over. Sure, we, 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 <laughs> we address a little bit of everything, but the main goal is uh, prevent pain or fix your pain if you have pain. Because a lot of our exercises are physical therapy based. Uh, and like I said, you want to have a 20 minute personal high intensity workout. Just that's, that's something we do in the back too, is we have customized, you know, uh, built workouts that I designed for you within 48 hours. If your company, if you want the customers, you say, hey, Dr. Sean, I want a workout for my chest, whatever, you have that. So, I mean, I think we agree that we all sit a lot, right? Sure. And I can, you can download a timer app, every hour in mind, you just kind of stand up, right? But once you stand up, what are you gonna do, right? So while you're already taking a break, we want to kind of hit you with something that will actually help your back so you don't have to go to a physical therapist or a chiropractor, um, you know, just kind of help you in that way, whether it's your neck problem or your back problem. Kind of like the lumo back, it reminds you to kind of straight your posture, but it doesn't really help you fix your back and strengthen it to right. prevent further pain, right? Um, so that's really the idea. And um, if you want, you know, CDC recommends 150 minutes of exercise um, each week, right, to maintain a health level. So if you really think about it, if you knock out, say, 15 minutes a day during your work day, that's uh, 75 minutes. So that's like halfway there, 
right? What else can you do outside of work? Well, you know, you have kids, play with your kids, you have dogs, you walk with your dogs, or you go mountain biking. So really, it's, it's another way, you know, why we talk in corporate or in office, it's a great, because we're trying to change behavior, right? We're not trying to change the individual, we're trying to change the behavior of sitting there all day, and when you take a break, what can you do? Um, sure, you can walk up and down the stairs, um, but it's, it's, it's hardly, it's functional in its own sense, but it's hardly functional in everything else you do in life. So just, just to sum it up, we can help everyone in every different way, and to take away the mindset that you have to do 30, 60 minute workouts, those are great and you should do them if you have time, um, but you can be healthy in 10, 15 minutes a day. Um, I think like one of Brian's example is, if you walk briskly 10 minutes, three times a day, it has, well, yeah, it has to be briskly, not just like, it's the same as doing a 30 minute workout, right? So once in the morning, during lunch, and then after work. Walk is boring, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any thoughts, Brian? Yeah, I hate walking, but being chased by zombies is it's fun, right? <laughs> so doesn't, doesn't they make that, that app for groups too, right? You do that with a group? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't see Thanks. You guys got I'm going to yeah. switch back real quick. Sorry, for can I show one more thing? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Cool. If I can find it. Um, so actually Brian already talked about these guys. Um, you definitely want to get one of these. Talk to Peter. If I already working with myself. So. Good, I did too. So <laughs> which one did you get? A thousand dollar package? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the, the other last thing I want to talk about is AFM Fit Test, sponsored by uh, Austin's Fitness Magazine. Uh, they're running, essentially it's a field day for adults so you compete in 10 different type of exercises, like pull-ups, one-mile run, 40-yard dash, burpees, um, and it's like 50 bucks, but it's on May 31st, so it's something that's really popular. Check it out. Uh, AustinAFMFitness.com. Thanks, Brian. No, thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I just have, <coughs> have a few books to give away. And also, Ben showed up. So I wanted to let him say hi, and if you want to say anything about your place here. I mentioned this place up front before he showed up, Hot Lava Obstacle Course. It's right up on Lamar, right? Uh, Burnett. Burnett, sorry. Burnett, halfway between 183 and Anderson. Yeah, go ahead and tell him about it a little bit. Cool. Uh, yeah, Hot Lava, it's a, kind of an indoor playground uh, geared towards adults. Um, there's a picture of it. We got rings and carbonets. We got uh, quad steps from American Ninja Warrior and big spring floor. And we have all sorts of people come out. We have people who are actually training for American Ninja Warrior, and we have people who just come out to play. Um, and uh, the way it works, it's a ten dollar day pass. You get a sticker. You can maybe come back all day. It's real simple. Um, and I brought a few day passes to give away uh, and quiz. Uh, so first person who can tell me. Average wind speed velocity of a male on the baseball. African or European? <laughs> Average temperature of basalt based lava in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Go. Thoughts? <laughs> Just yell it out. What do you got? 495. 495. Keep going. 2000. 2000. Right in the average. You are the winner. Strong like boom. Thank you very much. Do you yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's fun. I'm going there. We've got superhero study group tonight. So uh, some of us get together and uh, teach each other crazy tricks. One of them is a parkour instructor. We've been doing it for like nine years. He teaches us crazy things. Awesome. And yeah. also, Sorry, I was just going to mention, Ben is also a security pro. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're still planning on doing a yeah, talk for me, Yeah, i talk next month. <laughs> you want to give just a 30-second? Yeah, uh, it's basic OWASP top 10, um, kind of from a more of a developer standpoint. My background's in web app development, uh, and now I'm going to do security work, but I still do app development, like, anyway, for my own kids. <coughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, so any of the you're definitely going to want to come back next month because that's going to be an awesome one. 
everyone, especially if you pay any attention to the headlines over the last, well, for a long time, especially <laughs> the last 20 years few months, with Target and everything else, security seems to be top of mind. Okay, so I actually wanted to come up with a cool quiz like that, and I just didn't have time, so I'm gonna <laughs> go the old fashioned route. You guys don't count, but we're gonna go rows first. One, two, three, four, five. And so let's see which row. Row five in the back. So we've got three people. Starting from the left. I'm going left to right, one to three, all right? So you are the proud winner of one of these books. <laughs> Very easy. All right, row one, which is this row, one through three, left to right. You right. have one through three, yo. This is my You get a book. You get a book. <laughs> Oprah. Okay, row two. We got four people on row two. You have one a book. No. Last one. Okay. Man, no love for row three or four yet. Let's see. Row one again. All right. Already, so it's one and two here. Come on. <laughs> Number one. Ah. There you go, sir. We'll get you afterwards. So I think that's it. Unless anyone has any last questions for me or for these guys. So again, for the techies, next month, same time, well, fourth Wednesday. We were actually gonna be in the big room, but we didn't have a huge turnout tonight, so it worked out okay. Um, we got kicked out by CTAN. If they're still over there, they, which they are. So anyone like entrepreneurial who's looking for investments, you might wanna hang around, wait till those guys walk out. <laughs> Central Texas Angel Network. So there's like 40 angel investors in that room, if anyone's interested. Um, but yeah, fourth Wednesdays of the month, starting next month now, we're gonna be in the larger room. And um, we've actually, in most of our meetups, we've been getting to like 60 or so people a lot of times. So in here, it's been getting a little cozy. So we'll have plenty of room starting next month. So again, all you techies, definitely come out for the security talk. Uh, any questions or comments? Oh, by the way, last thing. My company is hiring, looking for a node developer. So if anyone's interested, come talk to me. Does anyone else have any like announcements or anything like that to shout out? What is your company? My company is called Level 7. And so we do, we're a startup and we're um, funded. And we're doing, we're actually working, I guess it kind of fits here. We're working with YMCA's right now. And we're gonna eventually broaden out into different areas of operational nonprofits in general. But we're providing services around digital marketing and operations and stuff for YMCA's and other nonprofits. So I'm the CTO, so I'm doing the tech tech stack, and it's all JavaScript right now, Node, actually Backbone, Sean mentioned. Um, so if you or anyone you know is interested, come talk to me. And anyone else? Nothing. Okay. Well, we normally. Uh, afterwards, if anyone's interested, walk over to Buffalo Billiards and have a beer, or I kind of joked on the thing, a mineral water, I don't know if they have that, but <laughs> since we're gonna try to be healthy tonight, we'll see, maybe a light beer. Um, so definitely, if you're interested in chatting or hanging out, um, come have a beer with us. Other than that, thanks for coming out, appreciate it.